Tell you, run a car in Texas, know what good coffee is, and whoa, that's good coffee. I'll have to show the way I make it uh, f just for myself. Uh, a little later, it might be interesting, but got to have a quick drink here. Mm, mm. Now, I hope you're all having a good morning. And let's get back over to this milling machine. And uh, I, I was showing a couple of things. And on the way, we'll stop at the cutter grinder, OK? Now, the uh, I showed this. Uh, this is more of a normal boring bar here. Now, this one here, I don't know if that light will turn on so easy. There we go. It did. This one here. Uh, I just turned it and I made it a bit hollow and I ground it away here and so it can um, access what was that oh a little wrench access the uh, wheel okay so this cutter is slightly below center of this. So when the cutter's rotated to center, it has some rake here. And <clears throat> I suggest playing around with this on a drafting table or just on paper with a compass and a ruler. And you can see how easy it is to uh, set angles by lowering a notch and then rotating it to center. It gives you that uh, automatic uh, back rig. Then you can add some side top rig if you want by angling the notch that that carbide's braced into. OK. <laughs> so you can take, uh, here's another one here. And this one's extended, a little smaller diameter. So you can take this type of tool and put it in a boring head and uh, keep the boring head centered, see? Or pretty much. I'm going to make a whole bunch of these. I've gone through a bunch of them. I break them. I lose them. Some of them i got to uh, put new carbide in. But uh, I want to make some different uh, cutters of this type. Now, this is a, a little more of a twist on that on that same theme. So this is the same thing, but I offset the shank. You see how it's kicked out that way? And this makes a pretty rigid setup. I think often better than sticking a, a, a slim bar out sideways on the uh, round heads. So I found this to be a pretty good way to punch uh, uh, larger holes with the square head. And then plus, uh, that can uh, be put on the round head here and uh, extended out even further by using a, an outer hole on the, on the top here. So that really kicks that out. I think. Uh, I think I'd do a 10, uh, 11 inch hole or something with that. Um, and that other head, this maybe uh, seven, eight inches or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe more, quite a bit more. Well, anyway, I got the old uh, uh, copy of the Indical, and that's this uh, clamp gizmo here. And that works so well uh, with the short distance I have with this number two milling machine, which is always a problem uh, with this size machine. A number three gives you more um, headroom in here. Uh, with the knee all the way down on this, there's only nine and a half inches from the nose of the spindle to the table. So there's hardly anything to work with. And I have a, uh, a shank um, um, for this boring head that's just about as short as possible and still allow me to uh, get the indical in there with a uh, last word indicator. Yeah, see, we're good. We're centered. <laughs> 
Okay, I will get uh, up on the tripod. I think this uh, microphone's working pretty good. Safety pin to my shirt. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, I'll get set up and uh, get all the motors running. Okay, I got this uh, set up, centered, and uh, I check things like this and see if I can pull it out. And it's in there snug, I can't pull it out of there. And I'm not taking huge cuts. Got some of this wax on there. This is some kind of hard aluminum alloy here, scrap. Uh, likes to weld to the tool tip. Okay, running at just about 400 RPMs. And I think that should be okay. Here it goes. Maybe that's a good angle. Okay, cranking it in. That's a uh, 50 thousandths depth of cut. Got good balance on the head. The machine's not shaking at 400 RPMs. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's looking okay. Now I could take a finish cut and uh, increase the RPMs. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know, it's a big jump, but I'm, I'm gonna risk it. We'll see if it chatters. I think the tool's sharp enough to do it. Get some of that wax on there. I got it out of the hole, put it in neutral, something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, loosen the lock here. And I will dial in. This dial in just about 15 thousandths, about seven and a half or eight uh, depth of cut there. That should be good. Okay, find the next step up in speed is, it's really fast. We're going from 360 to 980. I don't know if I can get away with that. Might vibrate too much. We'll give it a shot. Yeah, I don't know. It's vibrating, and if it's vibrating, you're not going to get a good hole. So I'll go back to where I was. This old machine has a uh, considerable distance between <laughs> the speed. The uh, old axle sun is not m <laughs> so much like that. It's got a lot of, lot of speeds without gaps. OK, we're back at 360. Don't do a little finish pass on it. Yeah. 
It would be nice to kick that up another couple hundred RPM. In my uh, use of this machine so far, I can pretty easily hold plus or minus uh, a ten thousandth. You know, I never did uh, stick a caliper on there and get an idea just exactly how big that hole is. It is approximately four and a quarter inches. Yeah, I can punch it out a hundred thousandths at a time. No problem. But I don't know about uh, uh, taking it uh, too far because it's pretty thin. And... Uh, I just think that that's pretty good. I'm, I'm quite happy with this milling machine and uh, what I can do with it. Okay, I will be back. I got some other really cool things to uh, do. And uh, let me get that set up and I'll show you the direction there. Okay, because I'm retired, don't need to do production, but still like to do accurate work. This is what I'm going to do instead of a digital readout. We're going to turn back the clock. And that is with end measuring rods. That's the set right there. And they consist of two micrometer heads that are adjustable within a range of one ten thousandths of an inch with the convenient veneer. And these uh, tools were very carefully made during the time, even though prices now do not reflect the actual cost of the time. These things, uh, it wouldn't surprise me a set like this would be 1500 bucks in today's money. Now, the uh, standards, of course, there's a one inch missing here, and uh, two inch, three inch, then we go up to, I think, five and 10. And uh, so you can stack these things together like you can put the uh, 10 inch in there. And these are handy to have to set your micrometers because they're so, they're, they're as made as accurate as can be, like gauge blocks, very accurate. So let me push this up against that. So I got two pieces of ground unhardened 01 drill rod right there. And so I can make end brackets that space those approximately that far apart. And you put the micrometers in there, one micrometer, and then you use a, uh, a like a 10th reading dial indicator. Let's see if I can grab one real quick. So you rig it up on the end bracket so you can put a 10th reading dial indicator in there. And then on the other end, you hook to the machine itself a pin, adjustable pin, so you can set these things to zero and move your table within an accuracy of plus or minus one ten thousandths of an inch. It just takes a little more time. But once set up, it's uh, not that bad. So I'm going to make some aluminum end brackets where it, they can take the dial indicator also on both ends and hold these things together. I've got the length here, probably leave them that long. That should cover what I need to do as far as travel. But I'll make them as short as possible. They can be attached, this uh, unit. 
I'll make it so it can be attached here. And then uh, these uh, can uh, just drop down in and I can set the table that way. Then I'm going to make another version. Let me take this loose here and I'll show you where it goes. Now this was commonly done on, on machines that not necessarily have fine adjustment. And this one, this uh, old brown and sharp, it's got a really nice uh, 100 thousandths per turn screw on the Y axis. But on the X axis, it's more crude. It's a quarter inch, more than twice the uh, pitch of the of this screw. So I particularly uh, need to position on the X axis. And uh, the, the knee is quite accurate with uh, 100 thousandths per turn, but I will uh, hook up on that too. So to hook up on the uh, Y axis, I will hook up to this rail here, the existing stop rail for the Y axis. And then back here, way back there, is uh, the stop rail for the knee. So I have to rig up uh, so I can um, hook these in. And I, I've seen it done different ways. And an easy way is using uh, extruded aluminum V-shapes and stuff like that. It's so straight enough and it works. But this is another way too, and I happen to have an abundance of uh, 3 8 uh, 01 drill rod. So I'll just use what I have on hand and plenty of aluminum scraps. I hope you're all doing good, and I, I will be doing most of that on the jig bore. That's that one. Okay, well, I will be back with that. Uh, I'll load this as a video, though, and say good morning, everybody. That's a brave dragonfly there. I think they're getting used to me. What do you think, Chloe? Better get back to the shop, huh? Yeah, we're heading around to get back to the shop. I'm going to watch the dragonflies, so. though. Okay. Only one duck in the duck pond today. <laughs>